Hello everybody, now it's time for us to get deeper look at Leica S6e. Now let's look how things made inside. So prepared for you another already open Leica. And let's carefully look what have we got in here. <clears throat> First of all, I need to notice that all uh, four Leicas I've got within last uh, half of a year, uh, all of them had cracks, uh, severely cracks on the uh, gears. That way, that if I waited a bit more, I will have those ge ge gears totally redlit, not redlit, totally destroyed. So in my case, uh, plastic got cracked in. Uh, a lot of places but still uh, held on the metal on bronze base but if we wait let's say a bit more maybe a year this plastic would just uh, detach totally from the base copper bronze ring and after that it would be not possible to assemble things back to have them working precisely. So in my case I have restored this gear on both sides with my usual method and <clears throat> if you look at mechanic uh, like I got very prominent way of making things mechanically so let's look deeper inside it. First of all system consists of three lens uh, units first lens unit objective that moves second is stationary set somewhere in the center and last unit is moved to here so when we rotate uh, the dial things are precisely controlled by this bronze cylinder with coding slits and Leica has used very cool way of attaching lens device, lens units in, to the main uh, to the main base let me show you this interesting situation so it's the objective part of uh, the first lens block it has as usual two screws for, to, to make adjustment at X and Y axis and little uh, springing metal rod that works as a spring but the most interesting part for us is that for attaching to the rod that then moves on Leica uses strong magnets here so in our case, if I am just take my objective, put it in proper position here and to the upper rod, it just got attached and not detachable. The same way uh, the last lens block is attached too, but it, it got some uh, bolt to prevent from accidentally slipping off but if I remove that bolt this lower uh, last lens unit will be detached the same easy way as this front lens unit so uh, with this magnetic uh, suspension or attachment like uh, succeeded with uh, making a nice force that pulls those blocks along the metal rod they don't need sprints for it and uh, but it got little drawback due to the strong strength of magnets Ly or Leicas have a pretty hard uh, rotating I want to say uh, the force to rotate dial is much higher than it is 
uh, made at Olympus of any kind, an icon too. So technically, it might be one of the reasons why those gears are getting cracked a lot. Okay, so if you look at the schematic here, let's look while seeing moves here. We see uh, two protective glasses. Those protective glasses are made interesting way. They are orthogonal, so it means uh, they are totally 90 degrees aligned to the light that comes into them. It has some uh, benefits, but I would say about drawbacks too. In our case, drawback is that uh, we have more or less constant reflection, especially in low magnification modes, and we can get rid of those reflections at all, because they are all, all, the, all the time in the center of the frame. Okay, so let's look at the erecting system. Erecting system of Leica is made strangely a bit, I would say, at least strangely. But for me, <clears throat> it's not only strange, I would say here's a lot of excessive moves. And the only way I can get those excessive moves understood is they have to uh, make tube lengths shorter. So they move a lot of rays inside, bend them a lot to get the uh, real, the, the, the outcome of shown as a eyepiece tube lens, lens as short as possible. So in our case we have first mirror that accepts uh, rays from the zoom module. After that first mirror we have two prisms here. Oh, in our case let's talk about one channel. We have one prism here that makes double reflection. After that prism we have another reflective surface, another uh, mirror glued to the base, it's second mirror, and we have two reflections over the prisms. After <laughs> that we have a third mirror, those mirrors are connected to the base with, uh, with mechanical attachment, that kind. So it allows uh, system, if you have thermal uh, increase in, of sizes, uh, those mirrors won't get bent by different thermal increasing coefficient, coefficients. And we have a one, two, three mirror, and the last mirror is here, uh, connected the same way. So technically, our array goes one mirror, prism, double reflections, second mirror, third and fourth. And only after that it comes to the IP tubes and, and as you can man mention those IP tubes of Leica have no protective glass. The same way as uh, Olympuses of modern kind do. So we have no protective glass here. It led us to have decent contrast and Talking about contrast, uh, Leica's contrast is highest among at least uh, Nikon and Olympus said, as well as the brightness. If you're, talk if you're comparing it to Olympus SZ61 or Nikon SMZ745, uh, this Leica's contrast at least uh, by 50% better than Olympus's and at least twice higher than of Nikon SMZ 745. Okay, and, and we have some nice connection of those rods. They are uh, limited by uh, bronze rings. And the same connection is made for uh, or gear and the most dangerous situation of gear is that due to pretty strong uh, amount of 
tension we need to apply to make zoom system working it already it all the time has very strong forces that try to crack those gears and you can notice we have diaphragm here that uh, limits field of view in for when, when zoom finishes working and since turn to go to the erecting system and those diaphragms are not covered with black color it's a very nice way of like us understanding of optic and i would say it's pretty fair and those internal parts are not blanketed not blackened it too all those internal parts are of usual metallic color made of aluminium uh, thin so in our case i would say that uh, we can blacken it a bit but to be frank it won't help us much because op optically all things are very well set while while uh, the main lens blocks they still have this blackening as they should because in case of those blocks you need to have a bit of blackening but to be frank not much again if you see at the front window it's not much blackened it's more likely gray than blackened and last scene those Leica blocks are held by three bolts synchronization is reached by this connection and limit of expanding is set with this hook like things so as for me mechanically a like us at least this kind of like is made pretty innovative but it still doesn't let me admit that optically it's it's uh, better than olympus uh, uh, any of olympuses because due to st strong inclination of channels <coughs> and uh, to be frank a pretty high chromatic aberration this microscope is not that nice for those who need a full field of view for working it's acceptable only for those who can work in the center piece of the frame because if you go to the left or the right to the frame you'll definitely see a lot a huge loss of sharpness that is the last thing I would say about Leica to you. So again, we have a magnetic suspension here, or a ma magnetic attachment here. We have <laughs> a huge, well-coated uh, lenses. To be frank, coating, co coating of these lenses is the most powerful compared to Olympus and Nikon, at least uh, those I mentioned already. And mechanic is pretty well, but this little issue with uh, with the gears creates makes all like of this kind be um, uh, to have the dial options almost broken after 15 years at least all those like as i've seen got those gears totally cracked okay so thank you for watching i hope this little addition of review will help somebody who likes to see things inside thanks again for watching and have a nice day bye bye everybody